Welcome everybody. Today I'm going to talk about Blender to Unreal Engine and specifically I'm going to talk about creating a model with an animation. Um, you may have experienced a problem where your animations look really tiny and I'm going to show you how to fix that. So let's just get right into this. I'm going to create a very simple uh, model with an animation and we're going to import it into Unreal. So the first thing that you want to do when you open up Blender is you want to go to the scene tab and you want to go to units and under units this is where you set the scaling for your uh, models what I do is I change it to centimeters and you also want to change the unit scale here to 0 0.01 this is really important that you do this um, if you don't change it to 0 0.01, your animations will not import correctly into uh, Unreal. So, first thing we're going to do is, you see now that we've changed our unit scale, the model itself has gotten a lot smaller. So, what I'm going to do is, I want to create a model which is uh, roughly 4 feet tall uh, in in-game, and so... That translates to about 120 centimeters. So because I'm currently at two centimeters, I'm gonna scale this by 60. So I hit S and then I hit six zero for 60. Okay. And now that I've done that, you see my model's gotten a lot bigger. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. You can also do uh, view frame selected or numpad zero. So now that I have my model, I'm going to create a simple pyramid. I'm just going to do some very quick modeling things here. Again, I'm going to go to frame selected. We're going to select the top uh, vertices. And then now that I have these selected, I'm going to go to mesh. And I'm going to go to merge at center. So that takes the four vertices, merges them down. I'm then gonna add a little bit of additional geometry to this mesh so that we can animate it and it will move correctly. So I'm gonna go into X-ray mode. I'm gonna select the um, I'm gonna select the three edges or four edges. Right click. I'm gonna do subdivide. Open this up and go to ten. So now I have some extra geometry in here that we can actually animate. Now that that's complete, I go back to layout mode. Our, uh, our model looks pretty good now. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to view, uh, front view, and I'm going to raise this up a bit. Okay. So we raise this up. Now you see that there's a couple things here you'll notice. Our, our Z location is offset. Um, we don't have any rotation, but our scale is set to 60. So what we wanna do here is, um, we wanna do a couple things. We wanna apply all of our transforms to set them to zero, uh, at least on the location. So if we go to trans, or sorry, if you go to object, apply all transforms. So that sets our location to zero, rotation, and it resets our scale back to 1 rather than 60, and that's important. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to set our origin of our mesh to um, the 3D cursor. Okay, Awesome. So now that that is done, we need to add an armature. So I'm going to go to frame selected here. And this is where we're going to add the skeleton to our simple mesh. So what I do is I'm going to go to add armature okay at this point you really can't see it very well so what I'm going to do is go down here to the uh, uh, skeleton and you go to viewport display and do in front now you'll notice that you still can't see it and the reason is that the armature is still scaled down very small so I'm going to scale it up just like I did our mesh I'm going to do s6 and then zero. Hit enter, and now we see we have our first bone for our armature. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to add two more bones. So I select my uh, armature. I go into modeling mode. I'm going to do uh, viewport front. Okay. And then I'm going to select the top edge of our bone. I'm going to drag this down just a little bit. Then I'm going to hit E for extrude and then Z. Uh, I'm going to move that up a bit so this extrudes out another bone. I'm going to hit E and extrude another bone. I'm going to do one more. Okay. Now that we have our three bones, if you look at um, so if you look at the object, so if you select your mesh again, you see our scale is one. If you select the armature, you'll see that the scale is 60. And that will mess things up on your animations uh, when you try to import it into Unreal. So what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna do two things. I'm going to object apply scale. So that resets our scale down to one. And I'm also gonna move this bone up just a little bit, just like that. The next thing you need to do is parent your um i'm going to save this real quick so i'm going to do save and i'll just call it uh, uh let's see we'll just call it uh triangle or we'll just call it try uh, just as a temporary thing okay we'll save that the next thing you need to do is parent your mesh to your skeleton or your armature so what you do is you select your uh, mesh and then you select uh, shift select the armature so now you have both selected in that order you right click and you want to do parent and I'm going to use automatic weights and what this is going to do is now if you select your mesh if you go to object weight paint mode you'll see that it has weighted the different bones to the armature uh, and that's what you want. Okay, so now we have our our mesh uh, attached to the armature. It's weight painted, so when we move the bones, it will actually move the mesh, and that's what we want. So we're gonna go to the animation tab. I'm gonna do uh, frame all here, so that we can see our uh, our pyramid. The first thing I'm going to do, let me see what's over here. Yeah, I think I can do view frame all here. Yeah, same thing. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select my armature. I'm going to go into pose mode. I'm going to select all of my bones here. And the first thing I usually do is I go into the skeleton and I do pose library and I add an initial pose so that I have the starting position. Then what you can do is you can select auto keying and if you come back to your pose library and hit apply library pose, it will key all of those items, uh, those bone positions. Then what I do is I go to the very end in my animation, like to 240 frames in, and I just select apply my pose again. So this will allow the animation to loop without having like a snapping effect. So just to make this uh, very simple, I'm going to go and just add a couple simple animations here. So I'd move it to frame 60. I select this bone. If you don't see your uh, tools, you can hit the T shortcut and that'll pull up your um, uh, movement and rotation and things. So I select rotation and what I'm gonna do is just rotate this ob my uh, bone and you see now that it's deforming the mesh. And so that's good. We automatically created our keys, that's good. So I'm going to go to another another um, frame. And so now we have just a very simple animation. 
right? If I play this, it's going to loop. So your animation is um, you know, following your keyframes and then looping all the way back to the beginning. That's perfect. So now what I need to do is, this part's always a little weird. So I think I'm gonna select all of my bones. Instead of the dope sheet, I'm gonna go to the action editor. And I think right now it's set to armature action. You can create new uh, animations, but I'll leave that for you to um, dig into. I think what you do is just rename it here. Um, we'll go ahead and try it. I might have to play around with this, but we'll just call this idle. So if you're creating like an idle animation, so you type in that, you hit enter. I know from past experience, it's best if you hit um, fake user. So this makes sure that your animation doesn't get deleted. And so now you see that we have an idle animation and our pose library. That was from the pose that we created. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and save this. And at this point, I think we're pretty good. We have our mesh, we added some geometry, we created a skeleton, we attached the mesh to the skeleton with automatic weighting, and now we've created an animation. And so all in all, this looks great, and all we need to do is export it to the Unreal Engine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to File, Export, FBX. I'm just gonna select Armature, and I'm also going to select Mesh, so Shift Select. So I only need these two things, the armature and the mesh. I'm gonna change my, my uh, forward to the X vector and the up to the Z. So X forward and Z up. I have a uh, just a path that I'm gonna save my XB, FBX to. Hit export. And now if we switch over to Unreal, so here is just a test project that I have. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag, give me one second. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag my try.fbx over here and drop it. And when I do that, popped up the window on a different, uh, different uh, monitor. It's going to ask you to import, and I'm going to say import our skeletal mesh, um, import the mesh itself. So this is going to create a new skeleton and the mesh, and it's also going to import the animation. So I say import, and if we look at what got imported, we have our skeletal mesh. So here is the skeletal mesh itself. Um, we have our idle animation, we have our pose library animation, the physics asset which gets automatically created, and ultimately the skeleton that we created for our, our simple model here. So again, it's like really simple. We have the root bone and the two other uh, bones. So these are the three bones that we created in Blender. And I think when imported, it automatically creates an end bone. Yeah, I believe that is how. Actually, maybe it creates the root bone. I think the root bone gets created by either Blender or, um, or it, Unreal when you import it. But in either case, let's go back here. And I'm gonna show you that if we pull up our idle animation, you see that here it is, and um, it, it looks like it's functioning correctly. I'm gonna go to browse here, and I'm gonna drag this into our scene. So let me move that up. And if I hit play here, you see, let me eject from here so I can move around. But I think you can see that here is our model that we created. Um, and it's got a very simple animation that we applied to our skeletal mesh. 
and everything is scaled correctly and working great. Um, if you don't follow the, the process that I just went through, when you import your, uh, when you import your skeletal mesh and your animation, what you'll see is you'll see the skeletal mesh here, but then your animations, you won't see the model at all. And the reason is you don't see it is because it's scaled down extremely small. So this is how you get around that. I hope you enjoyed today's uh, quick tutorial. And I hope you find this helpful. If you like this kind of content, please hit subscribe and like the video. Have a great day and a safe day. Thanks. Bye.